In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to make a super saw lead um, combined with a sine lead and also a piano melody as well. And it's really a three part lead um, to this particular tutorial. We're gonna have a look at how the three of them interact um, as well. But first of all, let's have a little look at how to make the timbre for this super saw. Not too dissimilar from some of the other super saws that we've used in previous tutorials, but let's just have a little listen to the MIDI riff with just one saw. So there's our basic uh, MIDI riff using root notes from the chords and the melody in the higher octave. So we're just going to grab this V station here and start building the timbre. So we're going to start by changing the ADSR envelope to zero attack, full decay, zero sustain, zero release. We're going to turn on the other saw oscillators and we're going to detune two of them in opposition at around plus and minus 20 cents. We're going to turn the overdrive up and put a bit of positive filter modulation in just about three quarters of the way around that dial. And we'll just use the decay section, just use one part of that ADSL for the mod envelope. And let's have a little listen to that now. We're going to add the two unison voices and turn that unison detune down a touch. And there's our sort of basic super saw timbre. And from there we'll sort of reshape it properly with some of the inserts. So we're going to choose some delay with a ratio of 4 to 3 and a sync rate of a fourth. We're going to turn the feedback up a touch, keep the width really wide, put the time up a touch as well and turn the level up. So that's sounding pretty good. Turn maybe the level down a touch there. Um, reverb, we'll leave that alone and we'll actually use that as an insert plugin. So we'll have a better one there. And we'll take advantage of the better algorithm by the lexicon. Um, we'll add in some chorus. Let's we'll turn the level and the rate up a touch. Turn the modulation depth down a touch. Put the feedback up and leave the center where it is. pretty good as well. Next we're going to ramp up the distortion, the inbuilt overdrive plugin in here. So add a bit more crunchiness to the sound. And then finally we're going to add in a little bit of the EQ here. Put the frequency up a touch and turn up the level. Distortion in a 
tracks we're going to add in some nice lexicon reverb. <laughs> And we can hear there as we change the decay rate of the ADSR for the amplitude envelope and the filter, we can really shape and morph that sound for it to a kind of typical trance supersaw uh, type sound. So we'll just leave that for a moment and then have a little look at the sine wave lead. So there's our basic sort of melody, and we're going to just change this oscillator over to a sine wave. And we hear that kind of clickiness, that sort of digital click. So we're just going to move up the attack and release to try and get rid of that. So it's a bit smoother there. You can sometimes get those digital clicks and pops um, with different synthesizer manufacturers with having the ADSR um, too quick at the attack and too quick at the release level. Um, so there's nothing else we really need to do on there. There's no unison, no filtering, no distortion or, or any uh, sort of modulation routines to the sound at all. It really is a very, very basic uh, sine wave sound um, that we're going to use. So next we're going to add in a touch of chorus to that sound. just to slightly detune it. Just to give it a bit of a shimmering quality. And then we're going to use some ping pong delay um, from the line six, uh, but any sort of delay, any sort of stereo based delay will work uh, quite well. If you've got a ping pong mode, all the better. Turn the feedback and mix up a bit. And then we're going to use some reverb from this lexicon. And with the addition of those, delays and that reverb it really adds a nice ambient quality um, which is very stylistic in trance so we've now got the sine lead set up as we want and the super saw as well So next what we need to do really is just automate some of that saw and add it in with the rest of the tracks and have some sort of build up into the the drop. So we've kind of created a, a little sequenced uh, mini breakdown in here leading into the drop. And I've actually created one with automation already built in um, already. So we'll have a little look at the automation that's gone and it. it's just on the frequency and the amplitude decay from the ADSR and having that evolve over the course of the breakdown leading into the drop. So let's have a little listen with all of the tracks playing together.
And let's just have a little listen in more detail between the piano, the sine wave, and the super saw. So these three constituent parts make up the, the lead melody. And they're all kind of quite important and intrinsic. You could see them as secondary ideas, but they kind of interlink and overlap quite nicely. Um, that makes them a bit more um, connected in the sense that, that they are all necessary. If you took one of them away, it doesn't feel quite as powerful. So let's just have another little listen at the, at the leads together in isolation. <laughs> So let's just have a listen to all of this in the context of a full arrangement and breakdown leading into the drop and with new elements of the lead being added in over the course of that drop. <laughs> 